we are back running the home stretch. Man, after uh, all the crazy flood and all the crazy weather we had, it sure does feel good. I'm Zach. Hunting, fishing, outdoor adventure and exploration, they run in my blood. I am deeply driven. I don't know what I'm going to do right now. That is big! That's what I'm talking about! Look, this is not all we're going to get. What's up everybody, this is Zach with Deeply Driven Outdoors. Uh, today I'm going to go run lines. It has not been a great year for running lines so far. Uh, a lot of boat ramps have been underwater, including our home stretch, which has been underwater for, you know, underwater or frozen for the better part of 10 months. It is open now. Uh, both Andy and Justin are on vacation. So I have uh, Calvin, which is, you've seen him in a couple of videos. He's Nicole's nephew and my friend Matt uh, with me as well. Uh, Matt has never run lines. Calvin's only done it once, so we're going to be learning on the fly a little bit. Uh, we're going to get the poles pounded in right now and get the boat launched, do all that. Uh, like I said, it's our home stretch. We've caught a lot of big fish out of the stretch of river, so I'm pretty excited. Got high hopes. We're going to go get these things pounded in. All right, so... Uh, I've been trying to run a bait trap as well. Um, I got one of the, just the Frabil minnow traps. Um, see if I can make my time on the river a little more efficient, save me some bait fishing time. So I got a bait trap. I've ran it a couple of times, sort of half-heartedly, haven't caught anything in it, but I'll show you the bait trap. That's the bait trap. That's Galvin. That's Max trap. That's the bait trap. I don't know what to bait it with. So I baited a few things. I had some like two-year-old goose jerky that I threw in there. There's a, a hot dog bun because I've read bread is good. I've read cat food is good. So uh, I stole one of my girlfriend's cat food cans and uh, poked some holes in that. Let the scent out. We'll see if we can catch some bait here in this little creek off of the smaller river. We'll see if we can do it. I'm just gonna lasso the uh, rope to this tree here. Our, uh, our our bullhead basket from the live well bait well. If you saw the video of us making that, uh, then this is where that came from. If you haven't seen it, I'm gonna link it up and you should check that video out. That's bait. A log like that will sink you quick. That is what I call magnum flathead bait. I mean, that's almost like a keeper. I mean, you can almost just take that one and eat that. But we're gonna hope that a flathead eats that. This hole we're in right now, we caught a 48 pounder out of here in 2016. We caught a 28 pounder out of here in 2017. So it's a good hole. It's proven itself. So it gets the big bait. Somebody lost the tube. I think uh, Calvin has been jabbering about tubing all day. So now he's going to get a tube. Calvin is picking up litter on the river and finding treats. We're uh, going to let this sit. We'll Probably do a little bit of bait fishing and come out this evening and check these two we got hanging. I cannot wait. So Andy decided to cancel his vacation early. Here we are running the home stretch and he's got his poles. He's going to go on this evening run with us. We're coming out right now for the uh, evening check. We have not checked these lines yet. They've been soaking. We have not ran lines here in months. Uh, been chomping the bit to do it. So we are waiting on the boat ramp and we're gonna get put in and Andy is gonna pound his poles. He got back from his trip early, uh, so he's joined up with us. He's gonna pound his poles and we're gonna check, uh, myself, Matt, and Calvin, we're gonna check our poles. So we uh, encountered some guys at the boat ramp. They had a couple of really nice flatheads in the boat. One of them I'm sure is bigger than our biggest. Uh, I bet it was every bit of 50 or more. Um, we're, uh, we've launched. We're going up river. We're going to start checking them. They said they caught those flatheads on bullheads, which is everything we got out. So that's good. Good. All right, well, this pole is bouncing. Check number one. Oh, yeah, that's a fish, bud. Matt, you want to get it? 
Oh, hold on, I'm holding the screws. Okay, I'll get it. Here, I'll get it. Oh, there it is. That's a good sized fish. I might fall in. Let me take the camera. I might fall in. Three guys out there. <laughs> yeah, three guys out there and I'm pulling apart of There we go. Nah. Flathead number one. Check number one. Right there, I bet. My scale was malfunctioning, uh, which was my concern. But uh, right there, check number one. He's probably nine, 10 pounds, not bad. I'm gonna put him back and uh, get this baby rebated. My scale was malfunctioning, so we, we couldn't weigh the fish. And we were in the process of messing with it. So Matt was holding screws while Calvin was messing with the scale while my hands were full <laughs> we pulled up to this line. So uh, we had to finagle pulling it in. I was gonna try and let Matt pull it in, but he wanted to hold screws. All right, Matt has not pulled in a diddy pole fish no, before. This we got to fish home. Oh, woo! And he's falling in. In the boat. In the boat. Yeah. Yeah. On me. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I got him in the boat. Right? Got him in the boat. He's in the boat. You got him in the boat. You sure? He's in the boat. He flopped it right on me. Well, we uh, are now two for three. Nice size channel cat, probably seven pounds. Matt is rebating this hook with a bluegill. Now I'm wondering if we should have just brought bullheads out, but. Let's see if they like bluegill. They are biting tonight. Oh. Dead bullhead. Clean hook. I don't like that. Good for us. All right, so we uh, are checking this bait trap from earlier. Set the bait trap. Haven't had success running it before. Tried it a couple of times. I'm going to see if we got any bait in this baby. Wow, that really works good. We have a variety of baits in there that should be working, but uh, none of a thing in that, so okay. Back in it goes anyway. What up, Flash? Set number eight. S still in the water. Spider web never a good sign. Smell. No, it's a channel, but it's barely hooked. Get it in the boat as quick as you can. Get it in. There we go. Nice. Right in the face. Woo -hoo -hoo. There we go. Calvin got to reel one in. Holy smoke. This is the kind of ditty pole spots we like. They're hard to get into. It's probably covered in spiders. Uh, so it's probably five pound channel or so. I said the scale's wonky, so can't really weigh them. Uh, I think we're three for nine, which isn't super duper, but it's not bad. I mean, considering a lot of places we run, uh, and we still got some really good sets left, and Andy's gonna pound his pole, so tomorrow we're gonna run 20 sets. I'm gonna nickname Mr. Calvin Mr. Slippery Mitts, because that guy drops every fish and bait fish he touches. And uh, old Matt here is Indiana Jones. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, well, we do have one on. Dipping. Are you okay? Found it. You all right? Yeah, I'm good. Just Oh boy. Yeah, grab the pool. Don't worry about me. I just got a broken rib. Mr. Flatface. Nice. Woo! I bet he's 10 or 11. Bigger than the last one, isn't he? All right, Matt, that was a hard tumble. It's good. I didn't I fall know. out. I'm I don't know how you didn't spill you. my beer. I'm going to release this fish. Again, down the scale. Not a monster, but maybe, maybe 10. I don't know. Not bad. I always like to see Mr. Flatface. He gone. This is the last check of the night. Does not look promising. Does not. Oh, there we go. There we go. Does not look promising, does it? <laughs> the flatheads do that. Yes, they do. They wasn't doing anything until we pulled up to it and it freaked out. Channel cats will fight it all day. There you go, it's yours. Yeah, I guess, I guess Calvin's getting a fish. Nice, Flathead. nice, flathead. All right, well this is the last check. I was a little curious about this one, I'm not sure if it was gonna pan out, it did. Caught a small flathead. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and release this guy, even though he'd be a great eating size. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and release this fish and uh, rebate the hook call it a night, but it's been good, we caught five or six fish so far. He gone. We caught five or six fish so far, so not bad. All right, this is gonna be the last line run. We got 20 poles out. 
myself, Matt, Andy, and Calvin uh, all have poles out. So we set Andy's poles last night. We're going to go check 20 poles right now. Set number one. Go pull it. Go pull it. And click. Clean yeah. off. Andy's first set was clean. The first two sets were both clean hooks, uh, which is my least favorite thing with ditty poles because you just never know. Well, did the bait wiggle off? Did the, you know, was there a fish on it? Did the current just take it off? You know, what happened? Uh, I don't think the current takes it off because usually we, you know, we're in slow water, but uh, you never know. So our first two sets were clean. Both of them had bluegill on it. Most of the bait we used last night was bluegill. Um, <laughs> Which makes me wonder about how to try and rectify that. So we lengthened our poles a couple years ago, give them a little bit more snap back. I'm wondering about maybe downsizing our hooks. I ran a trot line. It was one of the line, line rounds I did not film. I ran a trot line last time. On the trot line, I've got four out, five out hooks. We use ten aughts on the ditties. So we didn't really have clean hooks there, and we did catch the small channels. Sometimes I'm wondering if maybe it was a channel cat that wasn't big enough to get the bait or the hook all the way in its mouth. Uh, you know, so I don't know, maybe that would, that would help at all. Don't know. Couple of lovebirds. Indiana Jones and Grease Lightning sitting in a tree. Is he still breathing? Still going. He's still alive. That's bullhead for you, bud. Won the lotto. There you go. Fish on. That is the opposite, <laughs> that is the opposite of bluegill for bait. Bluegill are just like, I'm dead. Yep. Oh, we got a bouncing pole. This one actually is bouncing. Look at that. Oh yeah, fish on. Woo! Oh, Zach, you played with it too much. No, I didn't. You ran onto the boat, got on a root. <laughs> That's never happened. We've never had one fight off the hook. That's a flathead, too. Uh, better be wearing a life jacket. Yeah, rules is rules, man. That means I'm stuck in the orange life jacket the rest of the day. The boat rule, for the record, is if you lose a fish, Wearing the orange poopy life jacket, so. <laughs> I forgot about guess, that. Guess what Plainsman's doing? Well, I lost a fish. I'm not above the rules in my boat. You're wearing the orange poopy life jacket, you lose a fish. Deeply. Oh, it's so dirty. Oh, another clean one, huh? Oh, oh, nice. <laughs> Putting on a show, though. That was like set number seven out of 20. Uh, first fish in the boat. <laughs> he'll uh, he'll eat though. We are uh, we are keeping the eater size fish today. Um, good size eating channel. He's probably four or five pounds. So we are uh, looking forward to a good fish fry. We have the twenty pound threshold on the boat where we uh, will throw the big ones back. If they're twenty or over, they're automatically go back. Uh, but the little ones, we like fish fries, man. You know, I was I, I promote selective harvest. You know, I'm not one of those annoying CPR only guys, but I also. Uh, you know, realize about conserving the resource. You know, the big fish are gonna lay a lot of eggs, they're gonna be breeders, they got good genes. Man, let those, let those fish go, you know. There's no there's no need to keep those and uh, deplete the resource for later. You know, let's not try and let someone else catch those. So, uh, like good fish fry, we're gonna fry some fish up for sure. Uh, but if we get anything real big, we're letting it go. Okay, this is my bait trap. Now I've had uh, not the best luck operating this bait trap. I've caught a total of zero bait fish in it. I'm going to pull it up now. I'm going to see if we have any bait fish. Take. And the bread's gone. The bread is disintegrated. Oh, that sucks. You bait? Not one thing. That is failure. Well, that uh, is it for this stretch of river. We got a little bit of a ride down river, uh, and we got another gang of poles. We only boated one fish so far, one channel. Uh, I lost one, hence the orange life jacket. Bait trap was a bust. Man, that thing. Uh, I'm doing something, doing something wrong. That was out there for 24 hours. Um, I'm not sure what kind of bait to use in it. If you guys know, what are you using bait traps? If you use bait traps, let me know. Uh, I had like bread in there, which I've heard a lot of people use. Just, you know, I just had like a hot dog bun. Um, and I had cat some cat food in there. And beef jerky. And some old goose jerky, which wasn't 
Oh, maybe that's what that stuff is. So, yeah, none of it worked. It's looking like a nada. Cleaned, cleaned off. Of a clean? Yeah, it's clean. All right, well, this line is bobbing. Oh, yeah, there's something on it. Tugging. That's a big channel, dude. That's a big channel cat. So I got some fish for uh, fish fry in the cooler. But I'm gonna go ahead and let this fish here go. Good sized channel cat. Cussing him, look at them whiskers on him. He's talking. He's saying, I can't believe you hooked me. All right, I'm gonna put him back. In you go. Got a flathead. Nice. You want to play him? Sweet. You want a flatty or what? Yeah, that's an eating size flatty. All right, well this pole has a little bit of a bob. Uh, it's not enough to definitely say it's a catfish yet, but we'll see. Oh, that was my toes. Sorry. No, nothing on it. Ah, crap. False alarm. No bait. This hole sucked. This hole, we caught a 32 pounder out of in the fall of just last year. It is sitting pretty still though. So, I don't know. Oh, fish on. Fish on, get it, Andy. Nice, on the fly here, bud. Woohoo! Yeah, this was the spot. <laughs> so now in this spot, we've never not caught a fish. We've decided that we got enough, uh, enough fish for the fryer. So this flathead here, we're gonna put back and uh, hopefully that guy can get bigger. All right, we got a fish on this one here, last set. There we go. Oh, All righty, that right there, that's a big channel. Again, no scale, so he's probably, I would guess 10. There we go, like Zach says, we got enough for the night. We're gonna put this big guy back in the water. Let grow nice and big. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. All right, well, that was 20 poles. We went four for the last four. Otherwise, it was kind of slow. We boated five. Uh, I dropped the sixth, hence the life jacket. So it wasn't too bad. Uh, definitely the end was exciting. Went out with bang a little bit. So that's it for the weekend. Um, we didn't set them Friday night like we normally would. It was, you know, we would have been running them Saturday morning. But uh, we're going to go ahead and drive back and wrap this baby up. So we come out here, this boat ramp hasn't even been open that long due to the fact it's underwater. And apparently a bunch of slobs decided to have a 4th of July celebration and uh, just not even pick up their mess. I don't know who they thought was going to pick it up, but uh, I guess that's going to be me for now because I don't like coming out here and seeing this. I like to come out to the outdoors and get away from some of this stuff in the city. You know, I like to get away from people and get away from messes and trash. So uh, I don't like seeing it and I hate, I hate that people do this, but I only got one little bag with me. I'm gonna fill that up anyway and try and get rid of some of this crap. There you go, now you can say that wasn't hard, people. All right, guys, well, I appreciate you watching Deeply Driven Outdoors, that's it. We caught some fish, we got to run our home stretch. It felt amazing to be back out on this stretch of river rather than just trying to find some stretch to you know put some poles in uh, we did catch some fish we had a nice mix of channels and flatheads no monsters but it was a fun time uh, appreciate you guys checking out the video make sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell and we get notified every time i post find me on instagram too i post exclusive uh content on instagram all the time at deeply driven outdoors find me on facebook facebook.com slash deeply driven outdoors uh, hit the like video, drop me a comment, especially let me know about the bait traps. If you guys run them, what you do, what works for you, because I have not been able to figure them out. Thank you, we'll catch you next time.